Hello. Welcome. Welcome to send him off. I did a little wave as well today. I never normally Hello. do a little wave, but I might bring that in now for the new season. Hello. Like a little wave. Um, useless if you listen on Spotify, but just imagine me sat in a stripy t-shirt waving very friendly to you. Um, I'm not on my it's own. A, hang on. No, wait. Hang on. I got to say, before we started, they said, well, try and keep it to 15 minutes. If you yeah, yeah, He's just yeah, harped no. on for the last two minutes about waving. Right. But, anyway. You know, it's, 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 this is important it's me now, you know it's me the ever-present podcasting partner isn't it sam <laughs> it is it is my my ever Here we are. My ever present podcasting partner alex how are you doing oh, i think yeah. i think we've, yeah, gone, all right. we've gone a bit mad it's it's uh the delirium set that everybody but we're not alone as i've said the last 12 11 times however many we are now yeah sam we're not we're not alone we are turning our attention to brighton today um and joining us from together bha is josh Josh, thank you for coming back. We had you on last year, and and you've somehow agreed to come back against your better judgment, probably. But uh, yeah, we're looking forward 100%. to chatting Brighton with you. Yeah, thank you for having me, fellas. Uh, the friendly wave just was a cherry on top. <laughs> exactly. Uh, should we talk a little bit longer about the wave? Should we, you know, uh, wait, five fingers? Should we do the old queenie? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, let's get into it. Le let's get into it. Right. Last season, Josh, what did you make of last season? Last season was, in word... Uh, historic. Historic. Think, exactly. Yeah. Go on, elaborate. Uh, it's the best Premier League or ever league finish we've ever had. The highest league finish in our history since 1901. So uh, that's that's a long old time. Um, it was a while. This is, best, this is the best we've ever done. Um, so... You know what more can you say other than that? We've we've kind of played the the money ball game, right? The same kind of game that that Brentford and a couple of other teams are trying to play. Um, Southampton have done it with a plum, right? Over the last 10, 15 years, and we're we're clearly starting to see the fruits of our labour come through with with the finish we had last season. Um, despite a couple of barren patches, um, we've we've still come away with a ninth place finish and the best points total in our history. So. Every record that was there to be broken pretty much was. Mm. And he gave Money Night an absolute whip in on the way. Yeah. It was, yes. It's quite nice. Well, it's quite nice than that, really. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was, it, was, it was really fun to watch that one was. I did enjoy that one, I gotta say. Um, even as a Swansea fan, I got absolutely nothing against Money Night. I just absolutely yeah. loved watching it. It was brilliant. Um, so what's gonna be different this year? Is it more of the same? Is there any big changes, any little changes you're expecting to see? What what can we as neutrals expect from writing? Yeah, I think it all hinges on this the end of this transfer window, right? Uh, we've sold Bissouma. Um, that move needed to happen. He was in the last 12 months of his contract. Uh, he wasn't willing to renew. And frankly, I can't blame him. He's a superb footballer. I would argue a Champions League footballer. He should be playing Champions League football. Um, we got, you know, 30 million for him. That's outrageous piece of business for a player in the last 12 months. Um, would have liked a lot more, but obviously permissions given uh, there wasn't much to, to argue with. Great bit of business. Um, and, you know, he was arguably one of our two best players. Um, so the other one, uh, which you've probably seen just about every other day, I feel like, Fabrizio Romano is is spam in the timeline. Um, Mark Kukurea, uh, our player of the season last year, um, Arguably one of the best left backs, left wing backs in the division, obviously outside of your, your standard Robertsons and stuff like that. Uh, he is phenomenal um, and Manchester City won it. Uh, they've came in with a £30 million bid. We've laughed at them and said, absolutely not. Uh, if we're going to charge £50 million for Ben White, uh, you can bet your ass <laughs> we're going to answer at least that for Mark Cucurea. Um, He's on contract for another four years. Um, I anticipate him staying this window. I don't think City will bid what we want for him. Um, and that works for us with a World Cup just around the corner, him likely to get a call up. All that happens is his price goes up for when we do inevitably sell. We've had a bunch of loanees, our loan army. Uh, we've had a bunch of those players coming back that we expect to make an impact. So uh, Kai, I don't know how to pronounce his first name, but uh, Mitoma, uh, the Japanese fella that we've signed uh, he was not allowed to play for us last year due to visa restrictions. Um, so he went to uh, our kind of sister team, USG, in Belgium, who who were awesome last year. They were they pulled a bit of a Leicester City in that division. Um, and he's now got the visa requirements. So he's now in a 25, 26-year-old Japanese international, uh, one they consider their best player uh, in the Japanese national team. He plays as winger or left wing back. 
um, he is probably expected to play a major role. You know, he's he's an influential player. Uh, and then the obvious, Dennis Undaff, um, scored and assisted something like a total of 50-plus goal involvements last year in Belgium. Uh, signed him for five and a half, six million, um, 26-year-old German. Who knows what he's going to do? Um, we've seen plenty of strikers that have scored hatfuls in other divisions not make the move to the Prem. Um, but if he is one of them that does, you know, that that changes the the complexion altogether. At that point, you're you're genuinely, I can't believe I'm saying it, you're, you're hoping that we, we push on for a European spot, right? Um, if he doesn't, uh, and God forbid Kukurea leaves, uh, and with the loss of Basuma, um, and if Mitoma and Undav and, and some of the other low knees come back and don't make the impact we want, we're back to that bottom six fight. Um, it's the joy of being a mid-table Premier League team, isn't it? I think you just never know what on earth is going to happen until it starts playing out in front of you. Do yeah. you think, though, with Potter's style, you can probably start to think about avoiding that more regularly? Because you know the players he'll be bringing in will sort of, you know, suit around that pass in football. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I think losing our two best players by a shot this window would be a massive blow. Uh, yeah. That may be a little bit hard to come back from. Um, I don't think we'd go down. I think there are three worst teams by flight, definitely. Um, but... And like you said, with Potter's style, I think it's just consistently good enough to stay up. Um, but I, I think we would be in for a really rough one if we were to get rid of both, lose both of them. Um, it's just, you know, we can go out and spend the, the 80 odd million um, and it's still going to be tough to, to reinforce two players that are so established. So, sure. Yeah, definitely. As um, I, on a side note, speaking as two very worried Swansea City fans, is there um? Oh yeah. Is there <laughs> anything in the Joel Perot rumors? Because we're not quite sure what to believe down here anymore. Down here, you just we we don't know what to say. I say down here, we're actually above you, uh, being Brighton. <laughs> but actually, yeah. no, you're not in America, aren't you? I am. I oh, am. Well, there we are. I'm not sure where I am in correlation in Charlotte. <laughs> North Carolina, Over but... here. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Perot stuff. I saw it pop up on the timeline uh, last week. Um. I've been a massive nerd this off season and I've actually set up a spreadsheet uh, <laughs> of every single transfer rumor that pops up for Albion um, so nice. far this season. Just to name and shame how much nonsense gets thrown out there from big name reporters and how much okay. actually comes to fruition. Uh, I think he was the 41st uh, and we've signed two. <laughs> so take, take it how you want to. Um, Neil Mopé is apparently uh, under bid from an Italian side. Um, if he goes, I would say there's more weight to it. Um, I, I don't know much, if anything, about Perot at all. Um, I don't know what... He's rubbish. He's, he's rubbish. He's totally you hopeless. You, you don't you, want to go honestly, him. he's terrible. A total liability. Total uh, liability. Our worst player. Worst player. But, you know, we want to keep him for some reason. He's, he's good for charity, don't you? That's all, really. <laughs> All I'll say is he he fits the mold from what I can gather. Young, good player, obviously very well liked, um, <laughs> and, and would be coming from a team that we would look like a step up to him. With no offense to Swansea right now, we would look like a step up, right? Both yeah. monetarily and playing quality. So he fits the mold. They're the kind of players we go for, right? Championship or kind of those lesser Euro sides where they're like, would I want to play in the Polish Premier League for another year or would I rather go to Brighton? Everyone's going <laughs> to rather go to Brighton and get paid more and it's probably a nicer place to play. Um, Perot will probably fit that bill. But if we keep Mopé, we've got a lot of attackers. Um, a lot of them are shots in the dark, right? We've got Undav, we've got Enciso, who we've just signed. Uh, we've just sent Adingra, who we also signed out from a Danish to Danish Prem to USG, the Belgian side that we work with. We've got a lot of them um, that are kind of punts to see whether they work out this summer. Um, if we get rid of Mope, I can see us looking in the market for one. But if we keep him, I, I think it's just yet yeah, another load of crap <laughs> that people peddle. I really hope he stays. I time really, to do hope, some work I really to, hope more pay stays. He, yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's time to do a bit of work to make sure he stays. I don't know what we got to do, yeah. but let's make sure we do it, let's, whatever let's it is. It. Yeah. Um. So, obviously, you've given us some key players, you know, the likes of Kukurea. Um. Who's who's the sort of unsung hero, the one that's going to slip under the radar for for us neutrals? Who Who is the man to, to keep an eye on for Brighton this year? Yeah, I think you've got 
to Dennis Undav coming in with the record he has is scary. Um, there's no there's no other striker in Europe that had the record he had last year, uh, albeit in the Belgian Premier League. So how does it translate, right? Either we will be looking at him and thinking, holy shit, like at 5.5 in Fantasy Prem, for example, he's the bargain of the year, um, or he's just yet another failed striker, right? The Samata and, and a couple of others that come to Alair and, and others like that. He's just yet another one in the long list of scored a hatful everywhere else and can't do it in the Prem. Um, so he's one to keep an eye on for the new signings. Uh, and then the other one that that kind of burst onto the scene, and if you watch that Manchester United game, you'll know all about him now, uh, Moises Caicedo. Uh, he uh, spent the first half of last year uh, in um, beer shot in Belgium. Um, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend reading up what their season was like last year. Um, I've never read about more of a basket case club in my life. Um, <laughs> those, those team. Um, we recalled him after Christmas because of just how mental their entire situation was out there. Uh, and he slowly but surely broke into the team. Um, and it looks like he can do just about everything you would want kind of a perfect number eight to do in the midfield. Um, he has looked phenomenal. Um, he only played eight games because, again, he came back after January, uh, had to get up to Premier League fitness and then break into the squad and all that good stuff. But this season, with the loss of Basuma too, um, you know, I think he's going to be that man that come Christmas, uh, if you were to do a mid-season review of ones, I think he'll be the name on a lot of people's lips when it comes to, to Brighton and what our season has looked like because he looks pretty special. Yeah, definitely. That United yeah. game. He played them off the park. He was, he was outstanding. Um, so, where are we? Ninth Is last it... year. Right. Where okay. would you be happy with this year? Where Josh? would where would Dreamland be for you? Dreamland is obviously going. Dreamland is is Mitoma having an impact uh, and adding to the goal tally, and Undav being a fifteen goal striker that probably only stays with us one year because he scored so many and gets a move to somewhere else, but. Pushes into those Euro spots. Um, you know, we lost, I think we lost seven on the bounce last year, which is a club record as well. So not all the records are good. Um, but we uh, we lost seven in a row this year in the Prem. And if you took three of those games away, and some of them were against crap sites, Burnley, Newcastle at the time, who were playing terribly at the time, um, and a couple of others that were down there that were just having shocking seasons, and they got, they just beat us. It was terrible. Um, you take three of those six away and you give us one win and two draws. We met Europe this year. That's how close it was at the top there. Um, so those two players coming in and making the impact they possibly could. Dreamland is Europe. Um, realistically, because I've followed this team since the 90s, since I was a kid. Um, and all I've known is struggle uh, until we came up. Um, I think I'm I'm gonna be a, it's gonna be a long time before I get out of the mindset of let's get to 40 points first. Um, but Dreamland is I don't think it's crazy to expect more than that at this point. Yeah, okay, for sure, hundred yeah. percent. I think it's, it might be an element, as you said. You know, they've taken the money ball approach, and I think that that brings a few unknown players which, like you said, is a little bit apprehensive going into a new season. You don't know how they're going to do, but at the same time, opposition Where's might be the looking at them yeah. and going, "There's yeah, exactly, there's no pressure on them. It's almost like we said we said this about Newcastle last night, and I think it might be like, like Brighton as well. If you get to the stage in the season where you haven't lost those seven games in a row, like last year, which ultimately, like you said, probably cost you a real, real shot at some European spots, if you haven't lost them and you're one season wise and you you know you've you've managed to avoid that and you are really in a little bit of a battle at the end of the season for these European spots potentially, teams like United and West Ham are gonna almost expect those those places now and, and they're gonna feel the pressure. Whereas teams like Brighton and Newcastle, not even Wolves, I think Wolves will probably be in the first camp. Brighton and Newcastle, it's almost like like you said, the mindset's 40 points still. And Newcastle aren't expected to do it yet, so the pressure is just off, and they can just play, play with a little bit points. of a little bit of freedom with these players yeah. that nobody really knows, and it's almost like a secret weapon. I think these these players because I've I, I've not heard of them uh, before. I can't wait to see them play now. Um, 
either way, <laughs> whichever way it goes, I can't wait to see him play now. <laughs> yeah. um, so no, I, think, you, I think it could be exciting. If if you get to 40 point, everything else is just a bonus. So yeah. whatever happens after that, because I inevitably you will get to 40 points. You will stay up. I, I, I'm, you know, 100% convinced of that. Um, but you get to that 40 points afterwards. Let's just see what happens sort of thing. So I, I don't know anything could happen, and again, I w- I wouldn't be surprised. It is that that thing we've been talking about. That mid table spot is so like congested with a lot of quality in mid table now, which I, I think it'd be fair to say Brighton are sort of a mid table team, which is, I, to be honest, is a compliment. I don't say that you know disrespectfully. I think it's quite a compliment being where you were a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, I think anything could happen. Anything could happen, and with Brighton playing that football, why not? Yeah, and the one year wiser stuff is really important too. Um, a lot of our players are so young, right? Like our average squad age, I think, is pushed up by your Welbecks and your Lalanas being in there. Um, and Lewis Dunk is on the wrong side of 30 now as well. But I mean, you've got the spine of the team for the most part is is still very young. You've got Sanchez in goal, Spanish international now, 22, 23. Caicedo still in the low 20, in the early 20s. Uh, Kukurea is like 23 or something ridiculous. Lamptey, 22, 21. Um, Webster, who is also one of the better centre-halves, 27, I think. Um, Van Heck, who was uh, Blackburn's player of the season in the Championship last year, he's coming in and is probably going to play a role. He's not more than 23, I don't think. Um, and then, again, up, up front, you've got Mitoma's just turned 26, 25. Undav's 25. Uh, Mope is still like 24, despite how many... You know, he's feel like he's been around forever. Um, we've got a lot of really young players. Alexis McAllister, uh, the Argentinian uh, attacking midfielder. I think he's 23. Um, all of these players have had, you know, a full season of Premier League football, um, if not more than one. And that, we haven't been as active in the market, but that kind of one year of experience can be massive for players like that. So, yeah, exciting. Season. You know, you're right. Right. Why before we wrap it up? Final question. Yeah. Let's uh let's put the neck on the line, Josh. Come on. Give us a prediction. Where are Brighton gonna finish this season? I am gonna say twelfth. Um, okay. I think there's a lot of teams that spent a lot of money um this summer that we haven't. And although I do think that the the experience of age is gonna be really helpful for us, I think there's just a, a lot of money being spent. Um, and I think that some of those teams will do just enough to to gain those places. But I think similar to this year, I think between 15th and, and 8th, I think there's probably going to be at most 9, 10 points separate the whole yeah. lot. Yeah, um, totally. It's, I think it's going to be so congested in there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna say pretty boring with 12th, uh, but <laughs> I, would, I would bite your hand off for it right now. That would be a great season, given that we've sold a big asset and not really signed anyone that would be massive so yeah there we are well thank you again for joining us always a pleasure mate we loved the last year we've enjoyed it this year um i'm gonna say it out right now one of my seconds oh you said it's only the third time i've said it this year it's only the third time i've said it this year though right (laughs) i i did say to everybody last year but you know with about your fourth team now no three i think it's your fourth okay your third palace forest and now Brighton. Now Brighton. Uh, but, you know, there's two two former Swansea City managers in the league. Three, actually. Brennan Rodgers this year. But I'm not a big fan of Leicester, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they're not there my second are. team. But I always keep an eye out for Brighton. Um, Josh, absolute pleasure. Do you want to tell everybody where they can find you on social media, where, where they can listen to the podcast and whatnot? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, thanks for having me. Uh, as always, um, together BHA uh, is is where you're going to want to be, uh, wherever wherever you want to go. iTunes, Spotify, Twitch, YouTube. Uh, we live stream most of our episodes uh, post game, for better or worse. Um, <laughs> and yeah, together BHA wherever you want to wherever you want to chat. Twitter is where we're mostly uh, kind of active on the social media scene, but wherever you want to pop in and follow us, you can do. There we are. Lovely. Awesome. We're, uh, we're not quite brave enough to, to live stream yet. I don't think. Not po- yet. Definitely not post games. Yeah, no, not post games. That's, that's a dangerous, <laughs> dangerous territory. No. Um, but it pleasure is. as always. <laughs> Best of luck for the season, mate. And uh, I'm sure soon. I'm sure we'll be chatting you next year. I'm 100%. Sure. Um, Absolutely. Thanks, fellas. 
No problem. Alex, pleasure as always. Are we, are we going to give him a wave goodbye? Yeah, I'll give you a wave goodbye oh, yeah. as well. There's one. Look, we'll all, we'll all wave. wave. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Let me, change, let me change the screen. They can see us all then. Let me give him a wave goodbye. <laughs> there we Bye. are. A wave goodbye. <laughs> we'll see you next time. We're all on CPB's luck. There we Bye. are. <laughs>